Okay, good morning, everybody. You're very welcome to this morning's webinar on auto enrollment. First of all, I'd like to do a quick sound check. So there on your control panel, you should have a little question bar. So if you could hear me, if you could type in just a, a yes or, or a why, and um, then we'll get cracking. Okay, brilliant. I'm getting a lot of yeses there. Um, just so everybody knows, it, like if you're using a phone device, it is, it is possible just to increase the volume. Or if you're using your mic and speakers on your computer, you can simply increase the volume as well if you're having difficulty hearing us. OK, so let's begin. Um, firstly, my name is Karen Bennis. I'm the marketing manager here at BrightPay. And I have organized these webinars that we're running over February and March. These BrightPay webinars are specifically designed for accountants, bookkeepers, and bureaus um, who have payroll clients. Today's webinar will aim to make it easier for you to help your clients with their new auto-enrollment obligations and highlight methods to streamline your auto-enrollment processes. Our first speaker today is Paul Byrne. Paul is the Managing Director here at BrightBay. He has also worked as a chartered accountant for over 20 years. Paul will give you his fairly unique insight into what auto-enrollment will mean for bureaus, along with five practical tips on how to profit from auto-enrollment. Today, um, Paul will present five steps to make a profit from auto-enrollment. I'm delighted to welcome our second speaker today. Our second speaker is Rudy Jansen, and Rudy is the director of ACOA Limited, um, the UK's leading business coaching organization for accountants. His powerful and unique coaching program helps accountants to learn and implement the 20% of knowledge that leads to 80% of the, of the results, demonstrating that small changes really can make measurable success. Today, Rudy will uh, present how to generate 16 auto-enrollment referrals a week through LinkedIn. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, throughout the webinar, you're quite welcome to type in any questions to the question bar, as I mentioned there on your control panel. Um, at the very end of the webinar, we'll have a five or a 10 minute Q&A session, and we'll try to get through as many questions as possible. But don't worry if we don't answer your specific question. We will send a full list of all of the questions and relevant answers to everybody after the webinar. Now, the good news today is we also have a free competition. The competition is for a BrightPay Bureau 2015-16 license. And we have not one but two to give away today. So the competition is open for all attendees who stay for the entire duration of the webinar. So good luck, everybody. I'd now, now like to pass you over to Paul, and Paul will present five steps to make a profit from auto-enrollment. So enjoy, everybody. Hi, everyone, and, and thanks for joining us today, and thanks for that, Karen. Just a small bit about myself. As Karen has already said, my background is as a practicing accountant. I started my own practice back in the 80s and eventually grew to a three-partner practice with 10 staff before doing something completely different and moving into software development full time. While in practice, I provided payroll bureau services for about 30 clients, so I know what it is like in the front line and have the scars to prove it. Although I am now in software development, I do keep up with what is going on in practice. I know that you guys have had a lot to contend with in recent years, IXBRL, FRS 102, or TI, to name but a few of the challenges. My main message to you today is that although auto enrollment may just seem like another imposition, it is actually something that you should be able to profit from and something that should not require any investment on your part. So here is the agenda for my slot today, which I hope you will find informative. The agenda may have had some minor tweaks since originally advertised, but the overall message is, is unchanged. When talking, I will often refer to auto enrollment or automatic enrollment simply as AE. Also, if any of you have listened in on our, any of our previous webinars, I'm sorry that it, it sounds like I'm repeating myself in some of the areas. Unfortunately, it is an unavoidable. Um, and also, apologies today. I seem to have caught the bug that's going around the office here. My throat is a little bit sore. So apologies for my voice. OK, 
UK, <clears throat> you can't argue that the UK's payroll landscape has changed forever. The introduction of AE has brought and is bringing employers kicking and screaming into participating in a pension scheme. According to research conducted by the pensions regulator, medium-sized employers who have between 50 and 249 employees will continue to reach their staging dates up until March 2015. And small and micro-employers with up to 49 employees will start reaching their staging dates from June 2015. And all of this on top of another reason, hardcore change, or TI. So just some definitions there on, on what we categorize as large employers, medium employers, and small and micro employers. AE is a vast subject, and some areas are highly complex. It would take days, even weeks, to cover the subject properly. At the end of the day, you should not need to have an in-depth knowledge of AE. It is up to your pension provider and payroll software provider to filter out all the noise for you. With AE comes a number of employer responsibilities. Employers must set up a pension scheme with a qualifying pension provider. Next, employers must assess their workforce at their staging date and enroll all eligible job holders unless they're using postponement. Apparently, uh, some employers believe that if they choose to postpone all employees for three months of their staging date, then nothing needs to be done in that three-month period. This is not the case, as all employees must receive a must receive a communication within six weeks of the staging date relating to the postponement and explaining when they will be enrolled. If this communication is not issued, then the postponement effectively never happened, and enrollment must be completed retrospectively back to the staging date, which will in itself be a nightmare. So that's just one to watch out for. Employers must also pass on the necessary communications to all employees, not just those who are automatically enrolled. Within five months after the staging date, Employers must complete a declaration of compliance to notify the pensions regulators that they have complied with AE. There are also a number of ongoing employer responsibilities, such as handing opt-outs and opt-ins, making deductions and contributions, monitoring employees each pay period, and sending a contribution file to the pension provider. What AE actually means for the employer is that from their staging date, or from the deferred date if they are using this moment, all eligible job holders must be automatically enrolled. Eligible job holders are those who are between the ages of 22 and state pension age, earn more than £10,000 per annum, and work in the UK. Eligible job holders can opt out after being enrolled. All other employees are either non-eligible job holders or entitled workers, and they can choose to join the workplace pension scheme. In summary, AE is something that is optional for the employee but mandatory for the employer. A massive 1.2 million small and micro businesses are set to start staging from June 2015. Payroll, advi payroll advisors are more than aware that the majority of these employers will not have the knowledge or experience to make informed decisions when it comes to their AE obligations. With a vast quantity of information available, Employers are fast becoming confused, bewildered, and overwhelmed as to what the responsibilities for AE actually are. The regulator handles thousands of queries about AE every month, with the top three queries encompassing employer duties, declaration of compliance, and staging dates. For employers, the time that is involved in complying with these new obligations is a great concern. They are extremely anxious that the process of complying with AE will be time-consuming, frustrating, and costly. Research indicates that 80, or sorry, 78 percent of small businesses will look to their bookkeeper, accountant, payroll bureau, or advisor for advice and counsel. This presents an opportunity for bureaus to add value to their existing services. These clients will require help understanding the implications for them, their employees, and their business. This offers a considerable opportunity to gain new business retain clients, and increase profits. Bureaus should achieve greater fees from existing clients, as well as gaining new clients. For those strategic bureaus who will offer AE services, they will certainly have the perfect platform to acquire new clients, while simultaneously building a long-term sustainable business. According to employer research conducted by the pensions regulator, eight in 10 employers staging between October and 2000 
October 2014 and April 2015 as consultant and, and advisor. And this increased to 89% from once those employers who planned to consult one were included. Independent financial advisors and pension providers are the main advisor types used among small or medium employers. Almost all small or medium employers and four-fifths of small employers said they were aware of the staging date, compared with only one-half of micro-employers. Micro-employers continue to feel less confident about dealing with the administrative burden of automatic enrollment and were the most likely to say that they would find it difficult financially to contribute to a pension. Micro-employers were more likely to state that they would use the services of an accountant or bureau or payroll advisor, and one in five micro-employers felt they would be self-reliant. Responsibility for complying with the employer duties rests with the employer. If employers don't comply, they will face enforcement action in line with the pensions regulator risk-based approach. The pensions regulator will investigate breaches of the law in a fair and objective manner. Enforcement action starts with statutory notices and is followed by penalty notices. Further non-compliance may result in court action. A fixed penalty notice will, will be issued if you don't comply with statutory notices or if there's sufficient evidence of a breach of the law. This is fixed to £400 and payable within a specified period. The pensions regulator can also issue an escalating penalty notice for failure to comply with a statutory notice. This penalty has a prescribed daily range of £50 to £10,000, depending on the number of staff you have. The pensions regulator can issue a civil penalty for cases where you fail to pay contributions due. This is a financial penalty of up to £5,000 for individuals and £50,000 for organisations. Here are some figures of penalties issued by the pensions regulator. There has been a total of 2,161 AE cases closed to date. This includes 1,316 compliance notices and 169 fixed penalty notices. The number of compliance notices has increased nearly tenfold in the most recent quarter as smaller employers start to stage. A full breakdown can be found on the pensions regulator website. <coughs> As employers begin to tackle the complexities of AE, many will lack the know-how, experience, and resources required to deal with their obligations properly. There's little doubt employers are going to need professional help complying and familiarizing themselves with the new responsibilities and legal requirements. That's where their accountant, bookkeeper, or bureau can step in. <clears throat> A huge portion of the small business market will need to be AE ready by the middle of 2015. This offers a considerable opportunity to gain new business, retain clients, and increase profits. For those strategic bureaus who will offer AE services, they will certainly have the perfect platform to acquire new clients while simultaneously building a long-term sustainable business. Payroll bureaus need to decide if they are ready to take on AE business. With many shying away from offering this as an extra service, Bureaus will need to determine what kind of information and support they will offer to help their clients comply with these new AE duties. Advisors will find that a large portion of employers will contact them very close to or even after their staging date. And just to note that if a client does contact you after their staging date and has done nothing, if the staging date has passed by less than six weeks, get them to issue postponement letters to all employees immediately. Otherwise, they will need to backdate AE back to the staging date. Clients will have an expectation that their payroll providers will present this AE advice in a way that is easy to understand, relevant, and actionable. Bureaus do have a short window of opportunity to position themselves as open for AE business in this ever-increasing cluttered space. The experience and knowledge of payroll bureaus can help employers understand what they need to do to be fully AE compliant. So one of the main challenges uh, for any business success is customer acquisition. With the new opportunity providing AE services, new business has quite frankly been placed firmly in the laps of bureaus. The competitive advantages of computer acquisition, or sorry, customer acquisition can be impressive, ranging from catching competition off guard to increased market penetration to achieving economies of scale. Additionally, if these bureaus offer other services such as bookkeeping, tax returns, audit, management accounts, etc., 
they will have a new platform to reach and upsell to this new audience. You will find employers will be happy to consolidate all their outsourcing services to one person or advisor. So if you have payroll clients, there are five important things to consider which will improve profits and increase the turnaround of payroll clients. Automation. By automating as many of the AE tasks as you can, bureaus can reduce overheads for clients, increase staff efficiency, and increase bureau profits. Functionality. Ensure your solution has everything you need to prepare your clients for AE. Check to see if there are any hidden costs when it comes to the number of employees, employers, and the level of support that is provided. Beware of exorbitant hidden costs. Ensure that whatever solution you adopt is ideally in place from the start of the relevant tax year. The last thing you want to contend with is changing payrolls off the mid-year, which could lead to additional complications. Be proactive by educating and communicating directly with your clients about what is involved for them. It is estimated that there are over 30 administrative tasks to perform in relation to AE. Software solutions can automate employer responsibilities, which reduce the time spent on these, these tasks. With a combined payroll and AE solution in place, bureaus will benefit from greater efficiency, increased value added, and improved cost savings. Payroll software that can automate the employer admin tasks, such as employee assessment, personalized communications, ongoing monitoring, handling opt-outs, refunds, manager reporting, and pension deduction or pension contribution deductions will be vital. Payroll software can be set up to automate the majority of these processes, such as monitoring ages, earnings, and deducting pension contributions. If you're an accountant or bookkeeper who manages payroll for your clients, check with, their, with your software provider when the system will be ready to handle the requirements of automatic enrollment. If it won't be ready or the functionality isn't going to be made available in time, you may wish to consider an alternative payload or a software package that will perform the required task. <clears throat> okay, and now for the 30-second shameless plug. Uh, BrightPay is an AE solution that will empower bureaus to improve profit margins and increase the turnaround of these clients. The software has been designed to take all of the grunt work out of AE. With BrightPay, AE is easy. It makes the AE process effortless and uncomplicated for small business owners and accountants alike. With BrightPay, you can benefit from unlimited employers, unlimited employees, free phone and email support, all for just £199 plus VAT per annum. You can also benefit from a 60-day free trial, which has no limitations to the software. So basically, that's the end of the plug. I would now like to hand you over to Dickie for a two-minute talk showing you just how easy AE can be. Vicky is our BrightPay support manager, and in this example, we are assuming that the employer, or you on their behalf, has already registered with a pension provider, in this case, Nest. Registering with Nest should, should take only 30 minutes on average to complete. My own opinion in the matter of AE providers is that most small employers will choose Nest because it is government-backed and it has a mandate to accept all employers and employees, even the unprofitable ones, and it has been preparing for the AE tsunami for the last few years. Having said that, BrightPay will also accommodate the People's Pension, Now Pensions, Scottish Widows, all of which are great schemes, and this list is constantly being added to. So thank you, Vicky. I'm just going to set up with the headphones. Okay, so hi, everyone. Um, so as Paula just mentioned, we'll take a quick look at a company that is set up in BrightPay. And we are going to just use in this example a company that are using Nest as um, their auto-enrollment pension provider. My apologies here if I'm repeating myself if you've been on previous webinars. Um, so, um, so I'm also going to assume that um, the company has received their staging date and that they are due to stage on the 1st of May 2014. Okay. So as soon as your staging date is known, this can be entered in the BrightPay software under the employer section and in the automatic enrollment screen in the designated field provided here. Entering your staging date here will then ensure that you receive your on-screen alerts at the correct time in your payroll. 
Once you have details of your pension scheme, these can also be entered in right pay in advance of your staging date. And this is done by simply clicking on Pension Scheme, followed by New, and selecting the pension scheme from the listing provided. So in this instance, we are using NEST. So for a NEST pension scheme, simply enter your employer reference in the field provided. And then on the following screen, enter your group details exactly how you have set them up with NEST. On the same screen, you can also set the contribution rate that the company has chosen. Okay. So returning to payroll, um, as soon as your staging date is reached in the payroll, um, BiPay will automatically assess your employees for you, and they, um, BiPay will determine whether they are eligible, non-eligible, or entitled workers. You will also see these on-screen alerts appear, and simply clicking on Go, will bring you through to the options available based on the employee's work status. So you'll see here we have Alexander Gregory, and he is a non-eligible job holder. So we have the options here to print or export his opt-in letter, and to opt him in, to postpone him, or to mark him as exempt. So as you're required to write to the employee to tell them of their right to opt-in, BrightPay will automatically produce the opt-in letter for you. And an extract of this is on the screen here. These can be printed or they can be exported for emailing to the employee. So should the employee subsequently choose to opt-in to um, the qualifying scheme, simply click on the opt-in button and select um, your pension scheme from the listing, so we would be selecting NEST in this example. Okay. So once the employee is enrolled, um, BIPA will then give you the options applicable to an enrolled employee. So you can see here now that we can print or export um, the employee's enrollment letter. We can opt him out should he choose to, um, and we, or we can seize his membership. So should the employee um, choose to opt out, you would simply click on the opt out button here. And if the employee has made contributions, they've been deducted from his, um, you know, they've been on his pay slip, he's made the contributions, these will be refunded in the pay period that the opt out has been um, um, triggered. Okay. So BiPay will also produce the enrollment letters for you to, to give to the employee. And again, an extract is here on the screen. And again, this can be printed or exported for emailing. Um, the enrollment letter will contain information about the staging date, the contribution rates that the employee will be making, um, their options for opting out, and just general information about how auto-enrollment will, um, will benefit them. So once the employee is enrolled, um, you will then see the pension deduction coming through on their pay slip at the appropriate rate. And once the pay period is finalized, the employee's pay slip will also reflect the pension deductions made in line with auto-enrollment legislation. BiPay can also prepare the enrollment file and the contributions file for NEST, and we can also prepare currently the contributions file for NEL pensions, Scottish widows, and the people's pension, and hopefully we'll be adding to this list. Um, with a click of a few buttons, the user simply saves the file where prompted to a location of their choice and will upload it into their pension provider's um, web portal um, when they are ready. Okay. So that completes the short demo. Um, just to let you know as well that our 15-16 version of BrightPay is due for release mid-March, and this is going to contain a new feature. Um, 1516 will, is going to allow the users the option to batch process employees rather than um, enroll them, for example, or postpone them on an individual level. Um, so should you wish to enroll, uh, for example, a group of employees all in the one go, you'll be able to do this in the 1516 version. Okay, I will now pass you back to Paul for the next section. Okay, thank you for that, Vicky. Okay, so the key takeaways for BiPay today are know what you need to know when asked by your clients. With this very thing in mind, I recently published a paper on accounting web with a disrespectful, disrespectful title, Automatic Enrollment for Dummies. It's a 10-minute read, and we will send you a copy of this PowerPoint after the webinar, and this will include a link to the article. 
make sure you have the correct software and systems in place to prepare your clients easily for AE. And be aware that some payroll software packages, packages only partially handle AE. Be aware of hidden costs when researching AE solutions. You need to think about any limitations when it comes to the number of employers and employees. Confirm that support costs are included or inexpensive with your chosen solution. And be proactive and inform your clients that you're open for AE business. Okay, so before I pass you over to Rudy Jansen, if you did have any questions in relation to Bright Pay and AE, please type them into the chat bar so we can get through as many questions as we can in the Q&A section. So I'm delighted to pass you over to Rudy Jansen, who will present us uh, how to generate 16 AE referrals a week through LinkedIn. So you're very welcome, Rudy. Thanks, Paul. And you can hear me okay? Yes, I can indeed. Okay, fantastic. Thanks very much. So let me show my screen. Again, I believe you guys should be able to see my screen now as well. Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So good morning, everybody. So this morning, how to get six referrals every week from LinkedIn. Sounds like a pretty big ask. But let me share with you how we can do that. So before I start, um, basically I've got just over 20 minutes. And I must apologize beforehand because I'm originally from South Africa, so I, ha I have a South African accent. I know my mother always used to say I mumble quite a lot. And I also speak very fast. So I've got a lot of interesting things to share with you this morning. And because of the time limitations this morning, I'm going to ask you to listen very carefully. And of course, if, if you completely miss what I'm saying, feel free to ask the questions at the end. And then also when we get to the end, um, for some of you, you know, during the presentation, I'm going to share a lot of good information. And then at the end of my bit, I'll, for those of you who are interested, I'll tell you about a, a bit more about how you can find out a little bit more if you're interested. If not, no problem. So just to put this into perspective before I get started, one of my clients uses this these very strategies that I'm going to share with you this morning. And in his practice, these are his numbers. So pay attention to what I'm doing here because it, it, it puts in perspective. So through these strategies I'm going to share with you, he wins on average 15 clients a week. Sounds like a big number, but it is. Let's say an average client is worth 1,000 pounds. That's 15,000 pounds a week being added to the practice. Now let's say that he goes Pull on with this, keeps that tab open all year long, 50 weeks a year, do the sums, it comes to 750,000 for the year. And if we look at the, the lifetime value of a client, seven years, that comes to an absolutely ridiculous amount. Now you could look at this and say, yeah, but this is way overstated and it wouldn't work for me. Point being, we're talking about large numbers here. This stuff, when you implement it, can make a big, big impact on your practice. So pay close attention, make sure you've got a, a paper and pen with you. My background, I qualified as a chartered accountant in South Africa. For the last eight years I've been a business coach, for the last two and a half years I work exclusively with accountants to help them get the life and the business that they want as the, the practice owners. So here are just some, some of my clients. Um, on the left hand side, for some of you might know, Andrew Rhodes, Silver Rhodes. The British Council Awards winner 2012-13. Um, in the middle is Ashley Barraclough, again winner with 2020 and AVN of their awards. On the right hand side, Paul Carvel, again a finalist in 20, 2013 uh, awards as well. So some people have come through or have been around for many, many years and you know the question we've got to ask ourselves is they they're winners of things, they, they've come through AVN 2020, why are they coming to the accountants coach? So that's a, a question I'll answer a bit later as well. So let us get into the next slide. So LinkedIn. Before you start with LinkedIn, or if you're already on there, you must make sure that you've got a, a good enough profile on there. And in yesterday's handout, we sent a, a description of what is good enough. You, know, you don't have to spend months trying to figure out how to make it absolutely perfect. It has to be good enough. And it's fairly simple to do that. But you need that. Then the next step before you start with your LinkedIn strategies for what I'm going to explain, you go and you connect with everybody that you know, 
but no personally. So you've met them at networking, they're clients, they're introducers, you know them personally and you go and connect with them on LinkedIn because you want to grow your own LinkedIn connections before you start with a strategy. Then you're ready. So I'm going to describe to you two strategies now. They are incredibly simple. So simple in fact that most people find it a bit hard. They're very simple. So pay close attention. Again, I'm going to go through this fairly fast. Make notes, write down. If you have questions, ask it at the end. So let's go with the first strategy. And this is what I call the exchange. And you'll see with both of these strategies, we use LinkedIn as a tool to take online networking offline into the real world. So let me explain what I'm talking about here. So the exchange. So this starts with, you know, you want to make sure, firstly, you've got your own connections as a fairly high number. And, and make sure also on there are only people that you actually know. So for these strategies to work, you want to get rid of all the people that you've connected with over the years that you don't know from a bar or so. You want people that you actually know. And what you're looking for is your own contacts, your own clients, your own introducers who have more than 75 connections. Because if they have less than 75 connections, you know, this strategy might not work for them. It's a LinkedIn strategy after all. So you identify the people you want to speak to. What you do then is you call, let's say it's an, a client of yours, or let's say an introducer. You call this person up and you say, hey, Jack, let's meet up. I might be able to, to refer some of my clients to you, and maybe we can do a bit of a cross-referral. So you go out there and give us game. You offer first. And most likely the person you're speaking to says, okay, why not? If you can refer some of your clients to me, let's meet up. And you don't go for a face-to-face -face meeting. You meet up with this client or contact and you take them through a process because you know I'm giving you referrals what do you want so that's the question you ask you sit, you sit there in front of your laptop your LinkedIn is open in front of them and you say to them so hey for your business who would you like to meet I've got hundreds of clients contacts people I know personally who can I introduce you to and this person might say let's say HR managers as an example now I'll go into the bottom section of my LinkedIn profile where I have my connections, there's an advanced search button there and I type in there HR staff. Be careful, if you type HR manager, anybody who's got the word manager in their profile is going to come up, it's going to be thousands potentially. So you want to be quite specific in what you type in there and play around a bit with it. But in this example, I type in HR staff into my profile, 134 results come up. So I'm sitting next to my contact and say, okay, so look at these 134 people and tell me, who would you like to meet? And we go through that because I'm going to make an introduction. So let's say that this person says, well, yes, Joanne Shawcroft, she works at Boots and HR Head, so I'd like to meet her. So I go and I write Joe an email and say, hey, Joe, I was recently with a contact of mine by the name of Anthony Joseph, Jack, whoever, and thought of you. Anthony is a real good, it's a really good blah, 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 whatever he's good at. It's helped a lot of people at X, Y, and Z. I believe you'd benefit from getting to know each other. Would you take his call? Can't regard really. So remember, I'm writing this email to a friend of mine, a contact that I actually know. And chance that they're going to come back and say, hey, why not? Pretty good. And real life statistics, approximately 93% of people will say yes to that. Because it's a, hey, I know somebody that I think you would benefit from. Shall I connect the two of you? So the process that my contact would then want to go through is that my contact and, and Joe, the person I've introduced to, but they'll have a, con a telephone conversation first. Because you know, just to chat and, and catch up, is there anything there? Is there a connection there? Can I take it further or not? You know, and if, if they can't take it further, it's just, hey, well, great meeting up with you or great, great speaking with you. you know, let's leave it here because there's nothing further. But again, stats, real life stats show that 50% of those conversations lead to further meetings. So those meeting, sorry, those meetings won't always be 100% prospect. You know, some of them will be potential clients. Those meetings, and some of them will be potential introducers. And it's great meeting a new introducer because it's the very same process. You can run with them again, and people that they know. So to make this professional, follow up is really important. You've got to be quick and proactive about what you do. And 
so you know, in that going back to outside of the process, going back to the original meeting with whichever my client or whoever it is, I've shown them my LinkedIn with all my connections. I've given them a number, it could be five, ten introductions to people where I sent an email and said, I know this person, would you take the call? And now, in fairness, we swap around. Well, let me see who you've got in there. And literally, I, I look at their LinkedIn connections and I go through it and say, oh, that, that person's great. Sounds like an idea. Should we speak to them? And my connection will say, yes, I know this person, and repeat the same process. Send them an email saying, I'm with my great accountant, would you take his call? So, pretty simple. But when you think about how many people you can connect with through this strategy, incredibly powerful. I recommend keeping a tracker sheet because as you start meeting people, you want to keep track of who you've met up with on the left hand side, the date, who you've referred on to them, and you know what's happened. And vice versa, who did they refer to you? Because this is a bit key, you want to keep track of who they've sent on to you. So here are some real life stats over a six month period. One of my clients got three to four potential clients for new work on most days, and six and some. So these are real life stats from the real life world. Somebody who's mastered this strategy, stuck with it, implemented it, and mastered it. The conversion rate percentage, which is spelled incorrectly there, but hey, because these are warm leads, conversion rates are really good. 80 to 85% conversions. So really simple. Here's the process. Make sure that you have a profile, that you have connections on there. You look through your connections and see who, you'd like, who has more than 75 connections. You arrange a meeting with them. You help them first by connecting them with people that you know through an email that you send. Or it can be a phone call, but an email is simple enough. And then you simply swap the process around. And it's about getting out there and in the real world, extending your network of people that you know and the people that they know as well. So a very powerful process. It works when you implement it. OK, strategy number two. This one I call, I didn't realize. So the fundamentals of this one, the principle in a nutshell, let's say that I know 100 people. And in the real world, every one of those 100 people know 100 people. So through my, shall we say, first connections, I know, or between all of us, we know 10,000 people. So there's my first connections, the 100 people, and the people that they know are my second connections. So there's 10,000 people. Now, in the real world, I don't know which 100 people John knows. But on LinkedIn, it's a bit different because I can see who John knows. So that's where this one comes in. So through LinkedIn, there's a button called Advanced Search at the top. We go in there, and when you do that, you'll see you can search by first connections, second connections, group members, third connections, whole range. What we do is that we click, we click only our first connections, so the people that I know, the second connections, that's the people that they know, and can do group members as well. You see, in my profile, as an example, through that extended network, I know 2.87 million people. Now, what we do is that in this case, we're going to type in, let's say, as an accountant, I'm looking for HR staff because I want to work with this whole auto-enrollment product, and I want to get in contact with people like this and be introduced to them because I can speak to them about something here. So HR staff, first connection, second connections. And remember before, there were 134 results when I typed in HR staff. But now let's see how many of my second connections are also involved HR staff. And what do you know? 46,000 people. So my first connections, the people that they know, there are 46,000 people who have HR staff in their name. Now fair enough, these people might be spread all over the world through connections, who knows? So what we do then is, on the left hand advanced search, we go down to the bottom, we type in our postal code because we want people in our area. So postal code, first step. Second one is within 35 miles. You, know, you can stick any radius you want in there. But let's go 35 miles from my office, and let's see what comes up now. And wow, there's still over 5,000 people who have HR staff somehow in their profile, which are connected to me through my first connections. So what do we do now? So on this search here, we've got first connections and second connections. 
So you can see there's it shows first and the second. So what I do now, I go through this list and I spot somebody. Let's say Barbara Bassa. She's a second connection. I read the profile and I think, you know what? I think I'd like to speak with her. How do I get connected to her? And under her name, you'll see it shows there how many shared connections she has, which means I know nine people who know her through whatever way that came, networking, whatever. So I, I click on the nine results and I see there's some people and I say, hey, it's Roger Terry. I know him very well. I wonder if you could make an introduction to me to Barbara. So I call Roger on the telephone, speak to the man. I say, hey, Roger. No, he has a script, something to the effect of, hi, Roger, didn't realize you connect to Barbara. I noticed on LinkedIn you connected with her. I have an idea. I want to run by her and I was wondering if, if you could send her an email to introduce us. Out of role play, and that's really true because I've got this amazing new auto-normal product. And I'd like to chat with her and find out if she, what's she doing. So back into the script, I have an email already written for you, Roger, which you can send to her if that make it easier for you. Well, great. I'll send, I'll send her the email and you can use it. Hey, thanks a lot for your help. I'll let you know what happens when you, after you've introduced us and speak soon. So that's the phone conversation. So the template that I would send Roger is something like this. Roger would send this to Barbara. Hi, Barbara. I was recently speaking with my accountant, Rudy Jensen, and thought of you. Over the years, Rudy saved me a lot of tax, and they're always very proactive in everything they do, which means I never have any nasty surprises at your end. You and Rudy may possibly have some synergies. Would you take Rudy's call? All the best, Roger. So here again, the same kind of statistics apply. Approximately 93% of the people that Roger email or any of office connections will email, will come back and say, hey, why not? Yes, let's speak to the guy. So what I'll do then is I'll pick up the phone and I get hold of Barbara's phone number because it becomes offline, personal, real world. And I call her and say, say what I say, but that's the first step. So that first step, speak with her on the phone. Here yeah, is a connection. Is it worth us meeting up? And again, statistics would indicate that 50% of those conversations lead to meetings. And again, those meetings could be potential clients or they could be potential introducers. If it's a potential introducer, fantastic, because I can run the same process by them again. So and that was a very, very brief, quick run through to super simple strategies that when you decide that you want to focus on this and master it, it can seriously turn your practice around. And strategy number one, the exchange, I give you some, you give me some. Or number two, I didn't realize. And we tap into the second connections. Very simple, go implement it, it will make a, a real difference to your, to your practice. So yes, thing I want to share with you as well, I believe very much in this, what I call the results formula. I believe to get results in anything in life, but especially in your business. If you, if you really are serious about getting the, the life that you want, work the hours that you want, go on holidays as often as you choose, have your cash flow sorted, you know, just have a great practice where you're in control, then the supplies. Results formula says that knowledge plus implementation equals results. You know, nothing mind-blowing there. It's pretty obvious. And the difference comes when we do the, when we write the formula like this, we say, you know, we have a lot of emphasis on knowledge. I mean, every one of you today is here because you want to gain knowledge. You know, as accountants, that's what we do. We do knowledge. We study for years at university. We're always doing our CPDs. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge is a big thing. And it is incredibly important. And you know, this is where organizations like ABN 2020, very, very valuable. That's what they do. They, they share that knowledge with you, or that knowledge with you. Yet, the problem comes in that if we have all this knowledge, but our implementation or our ability to implement and really get focused on putting this stuff in place, if that is small because really life happens, then the results you'll get will also be small. I think it's pretty obvious. So what if we can change it around? And that's something that at the accountant's coach at ACOA, we've gotten right. We've done this to the formula. We said, yes, knowledge is very important. Absolutely agreed. But what if you can take implementation and make it massive? 
what's going to happen to your results? Your results will become massive too. And to make this kind of thing happen, it truly only happens when you put yourself into a process of implementation. Now, if I want to get fit and build muscles, it's best if I have a personal trainer and I keep on going to the gym all the time. If I'm in that process, it's pretty much guaranteed I'm going to get the body I want. Same kind of thing, yeah. So I said up front, for those who want to find out a bit more about how we work and what we do with our clients and, and why some seriously top-level accountants have come to us, you know, people that you look at and think, well, they've already got pretty successful businesses. What do they want more? Why do, why do they come to us? So let's quickly quick run through this before the Q&A. And I must admit up front, what I'm about to share with you is not for everybody. You know, not everybody wants to put themselves into a process of implementation, and that's completely understandable and okay. So that's fair enough. So again, you know, who is this for? It's for partners who are frustrated with where they're at and who want to get ahead. Now, that might mean that you're already very successful, or it might mean that you know, there are some serious challenges in your practice, you know, whether they be the debtors, the, the lockup, the work in progress stuff, um, might be staffing, can't find the right staff, even partners or succession, marketing, finding more the right clients. People are frustrated with this. And again, you know, Andrew Rhodes, Avian, someone I'm not shared with you before, but Hobinson Mulholland, a, a nine partner practice in Belfast. You know, you look at people like that and say, what do they want more? But these are people who decided they want the lives they choose, which is not necessarily working long, long hours or not making the profit they should be making in the cash flow. So uh, this process is two elements. The first element has to do with one-on-one -on -one coaching. Literally every two weeks, there's a coaching session. Very, very powerful. And once every three months, once a quarter, there's a closed group of up to eight practices or firms who come together at a, a secret uh, meeting venue. And we share knowledge, but also there's accountability in that group. And I, I've had it from quite a lot of my clients, and even you know, Andrew Rhodes, who himself admits that he's belonged to pretty much every single peer group in the UK. Um, there's never been anything quite like this because of the process that surrounds it which is this one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one constantly, and then the accountability to the group as well. Very, very powerful in that. So what do you get and how does it benefit you? So it all starts with a strategic planning session, a roadmap, because for me, you know, a lot of us have an idea of where we're going, but is it truly written down on one single A4 page where all the partners, and you know, including a non-partner firm in Belfast, all the partners are on a, a table, work on this one single page, and four hours later, we've got, this is exactly where we're going, this is our roadmap, and we know exactly what we need to be doing. That is phenomenally powerful. So clarity gives you power, and you know what you should be focusing on. It builds motivation, focus, and the whole team align behind, aligns behind you. Incredibly powerful starting point. And then there's coaching one-on-one -on -one every two weeks for accountability and implementation and whatever your challenges are. So there's focus, commitment, results. Then there's these quarterly meetings, four catch-ups per year, in a closed group of eight, and it is closed, confidential. We act as a board of directors. There's an education bit. There's a sharing bit. There's a planning bit. And serious accountability, which kind of fun, but gets you to do what you need to be doing. Um, in there, support accountability, and it raises the bar. And also, you can bring up to three people from the practice along if you want to. And again, more support and more sharing. So again, results formula, knowledge is important. But when you bring focused implementation to, to anything in life, but to your business, your practice, you absolutely get results. So I think this is a bit where we stick over to the questions now. So back to Paul. Thank you for that, Rudy. Can you still hear me? I can hear you, yeah. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, I must say, uh, looking through some of those slides, it sounded nearly like cheating to me when you you work off shared connections and things like that. <laughs> um, but it's great, great to have those tips. And um, listen, just there's a few questions that uh, I just want to put to you, Rudy. First, maybe before I get to the questions that relate to BrightPay. Um, the first one is, uh, what's the smallest practice size you can work with and and get worthwhile results? Good question. At this stage of the game. The smallest practice we work with would have a turnover as a measure of about 450,000 um, pounds. That's where the focus is. From about 450,000 to about 3 million pounds is the practice we work with at this stage of the game. Probably in about another year or so, we might have the process in place to work with smaller practices, but about 450 turnover at this stage of the game. Okay. And how often do you need to use this strategy over six months to bring in new clients? Good question. The strategy, it becomes a, a way of life. It becomes your focus and you stick with it. So to bring in the new clients, well, the more you use it, the more you're going to bring in. But again, you need to even allow the time for the follow-ups and following up there. So how often, shall I say once a day, two, three times a week at least. The more you do it, the more you get better results you get. Yeah. Okay. And what makes you different to AVN or 2020, an Academy for Growth? Okay. Those are all fantastic organizations. Their focus tends to be on the knowledge. And I know some of them have tried the, the coaching element before. That is something not what they do for a living. It's not their focus area. And what makes the accountants coach a COA different is that Coaching is what me and my team do every single day of our lives. It's what we do. So the, the, the process, whether it's the one-on-one -on -one coaching, focused only working with accountants all the time, it gets the results. So the other organizations are great with knowledge. The implementation element of the formula is not their strong point. And that's what makes us different then. Okay. <clears throat> And just say one other one that's come in here is how would you build a good LinkedIn profile? I suppose okay. probably that'd probably take a few weeks to answer that one. <laughs> no, it's actually very simple. We I, I believe yesterday an email should have gone out with a handout in it on exactly how to do that step by step. If you haven't received that handout, then let us know and we can get that sent out to you again. Or, or maybe even after the webinar, potentially Karen we can send it out again. There's a simple handout that will explain to you step by step how to do it. Okay, and just one other one. Uh, have you any tips for getting more LinkedIn connections? Through the strategy that I'm speaking about, it's about okay. people that you actually know. So if you want more connections, by using the strategies I spoke about, it will actually increase your connections, and also therefore you connect with their connections. But again, you know. Even if you go in your real world networking, your own clients, just follow the strategies I've explained and it will vastly increase the number of connections you get. Okay, listen, thank you for that, Rudy. I'm going to deal now with some of the questions that are coming in relating to bite pay and uh, autumn enrollment specifically. So okay, again, thank you very much for that today. Good. Um, okay, the first one we have here is when will 2015-16 bite pay be released? Okay, well, we're hoping that that will be available uh, early to mid-March, probably mid-March at the latest. And another one, could you send us a telephone number for BrightPay? Well, this will all be on the brightpay.co.uk website, but anyway, it's 0845 3004 304. I think it's on the screen there at the moment. And another one, what's the industry average employer fee for AE setup and ongoing AE duties? Uh, okay, the simple answer to that is I don't know, but I have actually heard of one accountant who's a customer of ours who, for a 15-employee client, was charging £400 for the actual staging and what had increased his uh, per payslip price from £1 to £1.50. So he reckoned that would be more than enough to cover the, well, I'd say the ongoing duty should be quite low because you're really only dealing with people that have, you know, gone over the age of 22 or, or new employees or people that have uh, gone over the limit, uh, the thresholds or whatever. So 
for a small company that shouldn't be happening too often. Maybe there should be maybe one or two AE events every year to deal with. And um, what? How do I enter the? How do I enter the competition? Well, basically, it's it's, it's staying to the end, uh, and you'll be automatically entered into the competition. Next one is if an employer chooses the pension scheme not currently in the list, will BrightPay make the make the connection so the new scheme can be used? Um, well, yeah, the, the answer to that is we, we are increasing the number of uh, pension companies that we, we cater for in the software. There's also, uh, I don't know if some of you may be familiar with a project called PAPTIS, uh, which is a, a, a unified uh, file format that will be suitable for all the different pension companies apart from Nest. Uh, they won't be ready to sort of roll into that for a couple of years. The practice when it rolls out properly, and it's not quite finished yet, and um, we will implement that into our software you know, more or less straight away, uh, so that you know it should be compatible then with all the other pension companies. Okay, some nice comments from a David Wright out there. <laughs> um, okay, on a, David actually is, is saying here, but in relation to the fees, on the course yesterday, the additional cost was suggested as. Forty-five pounds to sixty pounds extra per month, on top of the normal fee, and this may be a bit too much for some customers. And uh, sorry if I have somebody's having problems hearing me. And um, and that's it really. So okay, listen, thank you very much uh, for attending today, and uh, we send out the questions and answers to all attendees anyway, just in case you have problems hearing me. And uh, thank you, Karen and uh, Vicky. And that's it, and, and Rudy. And uh, we're going to close off of that. So, cheers. Okay. Good luck. Bye, everybody.